passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver, Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show, where we challenge everything and everyone. Uh, and we want to remind everyone, though it's been a while now, but I do want to remind people, this is a live call-in show. That means that you can call in. You can ask me or the guest of the day questions, and you would call in at 202-570-7057. Again, that's 202-570-7057. Or if you would like, you can come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, M-Y-D-R-K-E-V-I-N. Uh, make sure when you're there, you like the page. I'm a likable guy. I really am, If I'm really, even if I'm the only one saying so, I promise. Uh, and right at the top of that Facebook fan page is uh, today's show uh, with a description of our guest who we'll be getting to in just a few minutes, uh, as well as how to contact her. And uh, this, this guest came with some awfully cute animal photos. So we all know how you all love animals animal photos so make sure you come to facebook.com backslash my dr kevin uh and uh see what animal photos are waiting there for you with tonight's guest uh, uh every week we start with a hot topic a hot topic can be something that makes me hot and bothered or it can warm the cockles of my heart so um i'm gonna actually I, i'm gonna Split. I'm going to do one of each. I'm not going to spend too much time on them, but I will introduce our guest and have her weigh in on them. Uh, and you know that all happens before our first break, and then we hit the ground running with our guest uh, in the second segment of the show. So I feel all warm and fuzzy that uh, Alabama decided that it was going to do what the rest of the country or the majority of the rest of the country thought was the right thing. Um, you know, and I've said on the show before that I get a little uh, hot under the collar um, about immediately assuming that somebody is guilty because one person has said so, or two people, or 14 people, uh, or I think it's up to 21, it's over 20 that are, as, as I affectionately call him, our bully in chief in Washington has allegations. But allegations are still allegations, and people that are in power, and people that are very public, and people that are very polarizing are more likely to get allegations. So were any, were all or any of those women right? Well, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a mute point from the election standpoint at this point, even though he is still claiming innocence and that he won't give up uh, and he won't concede. Uh, so, but the one thing I do want people to keep in mind that even if all of those women were making it up, even if they were all lying, and I don't think they were, and even key players in the Republican Party didn't think they were, and came out and said as much. Um, but even if they were, this is a man um, who definitely crosses the line in the separation of church and state. He is coming in with a very fire and brimstone, or was going to come up with a very fire and brimstone, old Bible-thumping mentality, and try to make all of us bend at the knee to the altar of his version of his God. And you know what? This is America. Not allowed. So that in of itself should have made him ineligible to go, because he was really clear. Um, and his continual comments about that were racist, that were sexist, that, uh, you know, um, were definitely nutcase, what I call the nutcase Christians. Now, as you all know, I'm not calling all Christians nutcases, and I have said repeatedly that I think that those people who are true Christians need to get together and drum the rest of these nutcases out because they give Christianity a bad name. So my warm and fuzzy is Alabama did the right thing. My hot on the collar is net neutrality. Now, it's not over. It's still going to be challenged. It's still going to be a fight. It's not going to change tomorrow. But basically, once again, our, our lobbyist-sponsored Washington is trying to make sure that the corporations and the people 
uh, that write the biggest checks to them are going to get the biggest benefits, whether it's in this upcoming proposed tax cut or whether it's with net neutrality, where big companies would then start to be able to play us for pawns and all sorts of games uh, and take the Internet out of the hands of the people. So when are we going when are we going to call Washington on its hypocritical, biased, lobbyist paid for load of crap? It can't be soon enough. Yesterday wasn't soon enough. Last year wasn't soon enough. Last decade wasn't soon enough. How much longer are we going to tolerate it? So those are my hot topics. Now I'm going to introduce tonight's guest. And she gets thrown in. She gets to comment on one or both of them until we go to our first break. Lucky her, right? Uh, <laughs> none of my guests ever get warned what we're going to talk about, so they're hearing it as you are. Tonight's guest is Mary Ellen Walsh. Mary Ellen Walsh teaches calm, assertive, conscious pack leadership. I'd send her to Washington, but I don't think there's any real leadership going on out in Washington. So how, how, would you, how would you create, you know, maybe we should. Uh, with her unique ability to understand a dog's language and teach humans to begin to think like a dog, your dog, Mary Ellen helps regular people forge lifelong relationships with their dogs, thus erasing frustrating and sometimes dangerous behavioral issues. I'm going to see if it works on skunks. Then we could send her to Washington. Since 1983, Mary Ellen has worked one-on-one -on -one with thousands of families with dog behavior problems. With more than 30 years of experience, Mary Ellen is a renowned canine behaviorist and champion AKC breeder. Mary Ellen teaches her conscious pack leadership techniques in private sessions and group classes. She's also available to speak about issues related to dog behavior as a radio, television, and media guest. So Mary Ellen, welcome. How are you today? Why, thank you, Dr. Kevin, and thank you for that very warm introduction. Um, I truly appreciate it. I love getting my, uh, my word out on dogs. And, um, you know, as you said, that pack leadership thing is very important. That calm, assertive, this can be done. This can be taken care of. So I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Kevin. You are welcome. So we've got about five minutes left before our first segment ends. So you get mm -hmm. to weigh in, though. You get to be put on the spot like all my guests. So right. choose one or both. What do you think of the hot topics today? Well, I think that they are um, indeed certainly what's circulating around all of our lives these days. And I think that um, – I think it's very, very cumbersome. Uh, I think what happened in Alabama is what needed to happen. Uh, there was a uh, whole series of events, as there always is in life, you know, that, that kind of cascade in and out of life that create situations to happen. I'm rather a firm believer in that um, um, things are as they're supposed to be. I think there's just, there is, it's overwhelming, quite frankly, Dr. Kevin, to all of us in all walks of life, hearing the accusations being made about um, so many people in so many different industries, right, wrong, or indifferent, the, the level of hurt and pain that's in the country now for so many reasons. Um, and then, of course, it's the constant 24-hour news cycle that we're all caught up in. I read something today, and it, it was – back when, you know, we all grew up and they were talking about the 60s and 70s and how we could all go outside and play and run and bang our knees up and fall off at swings and not wear helmets to ride bicycles. I don't know. It's, it, it, in some ways, our lives are so sanitized. I mean, we have at least um, a constant, constant information. So to me, being in the world of dogs and working with them on a level that's intuitive that really is beyond language is so exciting and it's exhilarating and I think it keeps me being six years old. I'm certainly tuned into what's going on in the world in Washington, D.C. and around the country. I would love to see us if in some way we could become, I'm not sure we ever were, more united than we are now. I think it's heartbreaking. And the bipartisanship and the anger, Kevin, Dr. Kevin, the anger that's happening is, is um, very, very difficult for us, and, and I hope soon that we can change the flow of energy in our country. But well, I think you that know, what we have to do is to have a, con a, a, a sense of more love for who we are as, as a country, because I'll tell you something. I would stop to help anybody, regardless of color, age, uh, gender. It's, we're together. We're, we're, I had a radio show, and my, my ending every day, every Saturday was – 
you know, let's go out and do the right thing. We're all connected to each other. Well, and I think that one of the things that we put up with, we tolerate, and we Mm -hmm. shouldn't, and we shouldn't tolerate anymore, and that we need to get out there and we need to speak in a united voice was, you know, it was the united voice in a way that got our bully in chief elected. Because one thing, the only thing the united voice ever agreed to on this country was Washington had to change. They say he, they saw him as change. Enough people saw him as change to get there. Mm-hmm. Now, change yeah, is no, not no. always good, but everybody wanted it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I think, you know, I've read, um, you know, I'm a person who meditates. I'm a person who takes time. I'm a person who thinks about empathy. And um, I remember growing up in a time, right, wrong, or indifferent, but our country and not to sound, gin, gin, uh, you know, sort of flag waving and, as you said, bump, Bible thumping, but it, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond trying to love one another. I mean, I'm sure you're experiencing what I'm experiencing in terms of just even being out on the on the highways and driving. People are the anger that's coming out out of cars. I never remember people tailgating like they're now doing, and banging on their horns and frustrating and uh, in frustration. I think that I, I call him the president of the United States because he is the president. And I think that if I name call him, what's the difference between my name calling him or, na- or bullying and name calling any other human being? I tell you, I have a code about that even with the animals. People look to me for direction, um, for professionalism, and for knowledge because it goes way back. Um, I started this actually when I was six years old, and when I was in the process of breeding my Labrador Retrievers and showing them in the show world, there could be, and horse people will tell you something very similar, that people can stand around the edge of these show rings and cast such terrible comments about four-leggeds. I mean, they would literally make me cringe sometimes what I would hear because people wanted to win for their own egos. So, you know, it sets off. Language, words have power. You're a writer. I write. So I'm really looking to write the most succinct sentence I can in as few words as possible. And I want to put my my magic out there in a very positive way. I want to leave you feeling like, wow, how soon can you come back? You know, because we've legitimately worked on a situation together and in my world right now, in my universe, it's with dogs, puppies, which I have a lot of experience working with puppies who are sending people off into the stratosphere with frustration um, and, and teaching them about the stages of the development of a puppy's life. Now, if I said, oh, my goodness, I don't think I've ever seen a more arrogant dog, puppy in all my life, do you know that I would, that would be it? That puppy forever in the minds, because I'm an expert, so they would say, she said my dog is an ex. And that would be it. So I, I, even when they ask very pertinent questions about a dog, if I find a dog is what I used to be called as a kid was stubborn, and I used to say, uh-uh, I'm determined, right? So, yeah. And that's what I'll say to people. He's a very determined puppy. Let's go with it. Let's work with it. And that's what I'm trying to do now. Like when this happened in Alabama the other day and what's going on now um, with the whole Mueller investigation and – I'm thinking to myself, too, as a business person, what is this costing us as American citizens on either side of the aisle, right, in terms of the tax dollars we're paying in? That's frightening to me that we're paying in to cover up people's transgressions. There's a fund for this, and we're paying millions of dollars to bail people out that have made uh, advances on other people. I mean, that's a real act of aggression. And what, here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to stay st- centered in an, in an empathetic viewpoint, you know, of the world while keep protecting my own spirit. But recognizing well, you know, that one, of the things, one, of the, one yeah. of the things, Mary Ellen, um, yes. and, and I, I just I, I want to put this out. I'm surprised, actually, we haven't had break yet because uh, it usually comes and it comes in very quietly. Um, and yep. then suddenly no one can hear us anyway. So I know it's going to happen any minute. Um, and there it is. Uh, we're going to be right back with Mary Ellen Walsh. Uh, and uh, we're going to be seeing about uh, dogs. And we're going to do a very quick wrap up of the conversation we were having.
Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Mother, mother ocean. Hi, I'm Jimmy Buffett. West Indian manatees are one of the most unique animals on earth, and we're still finding out so many new things about them. But manatees are endangered, and many of them are killed or injured each year because of watercraft collisions or other human activities. You can help save these gentle marine mammals. For free tips on what you can do, call Save the Manatee Club at 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show, where we challenge everything and everyone. Um, and we are on with today's guest. We're going to be jumping in in just a second. I do want to wrap up. We were kind of in the middle of talking, and I looked at the clock, and I knew that the time was going to go up any time now. Um, there was something you said I wanted to respond to. Um, and one of the one of the things is, uh, is Mary Ellen, is... Um, as we're kind of going back and forth, breathe. I need you to breathe. Breathe, honey. Um, <laughs> so that I can respond to some of what you say. If you put 10 things down, I can't respond to 10 things by the time I get to them because I forgot the first eight. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, Dr. <Kim. laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. So um, I did want to make a comment. And uh, then we're going to get on to taking us outside the box with our animals and the work that you do. Um, and, and it refers to my calling our president, who I do call our president, but I do call him bully in chief. And there is a simple reason why, which is I am a huge advocate about bullying. And I speak about it all the time. And the first thing you have to do with a bully is identify that they're a bully. And their office should not protect them from being identified they're a bully. That's not name calling, it's identifying. And the list is longer than if we put it on paper from where I'm standing to where you're standing of examples of where he is bullying every day in the public to people that disagree with him. Not disagreeing with them, but bullying them and trying to get them to shut up by through intimidation. And that's bullying. And we cannot not call a bully a bully because that's what allows them to get away with it. So there's a difference between name calling and identifying an inappropriate and negative behavior that I don't want children to look at and think is okay. I don't want any child out there to think that the language he uses and that gets repeated and the way you treat people is a responsible, respectful way to treat somebody. And I work with a lot of children and I've been working with children for almost 30 years. And when you don't say anything, you're telling them it's okay. Does that make sense? Well, Dr. Kevin, it does, but there's, there's, a, there's a whole percentage of half of the country that doesn't uh, um, believe that the president is a bully. And I think that, um, I think on both sides of the conversation, People have opinion about that, too, because, you know, we can go back through our history on both sides of the, uh, of the aisle and find people that were most dishonest 
in their political dealings and their personal yeah. dealings while in office. So I think that what, but when we're talking to each other, I think publicly, I think it's wonderful to have conversation, certainly, uh, and discussion about it. But I think that when, well, I think we've said enough, frankly, because I, I've expressed my opinion on it. Um, and I, you know, I would like to go further in, in discussing yeah. what with the dogs and what. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I don't want to turn this into a political show, but you made mm -hmm. a point that I felt like I, I wanted to respond to and not leave it out there in the airwaves, and people right. can say, "Hey, I've she's perfectly I've right." Yeah, uh, you know, and um, uh, you know, and the thing I is, think this, Dr. Kevin, I think there's a lot of name calling that's going on. On, I mean, you see it on Facebook. It's all through Twitter. People jump to conclusions. Assessments are made before any fa many times facts are actually in. And I think on both sides, we are fatigued. I know I, I am I, here in the Northeast. And I know that yep. my client base is as well. People are, please stop, everybody. Just sing, okay? Just accept yep. an award. And on the other side, like you said, don't preach religion to me. This is America. I would like to make my own decisions and come together in community with people of other races, other ethnic backgrounds. So we, that's, how, that's who we are. That's what's yep, made us. Absolutely. Of the country we are. And, Love this um, country. And, and I love, the, I love you know this. what I love? This discourse that you yes. and I can have a conversation like this yep. and, and talk about it. It's yeah. great. Best country in the world. Absolutely. And we would, I would defend your right to say it as vehemently as you would deserve my right to have to free speech. Absolutely. So speaking about free speech, and I want mm -hmm. to tell you, I loved what you said about identifying a dog as arrogant or stubborn and now that they're they're right. left with that impression in their owner's mind. Um, what you said uh, was so close to things I've said about dealing with children. Like oh, watch your okay. words with children and don't, you know, and, and, and take something like, you know, maybe you wanna call them stubborn, but let's call them persistent. Let's call them determined. Mm -hmm. Let's, right. let's, let's, you know, Let's talk about how to channel any energy into a positive thing. So when you said that, I got all I got all warm and fuzzy because I was like, oh, I love oh, that. Don't a, a kindred soul in in yes, puppy indeed. and kitty land. <laughs> yes, you know it's so very true. I I find myself really uh, conscious when I'm speaking to people because they're looking at me with huge eyes about please make this situation better on a behavioral issue. And you know what's funny, and you've probably experienced it in a similar way. I'll be working with someone, and they're giving me a descriptive of what this dog is, what this puppy is. And this animal could probably be three months old. And this negativity is coming out of the person. And I just turn to my side, look at the person, and just sort of with like a smile and a really? And they look at me and they say, it's not the dog, is it? <laughs> And they say, no, not usually. <laughs> not usually. <laughs> and, and once I break the barrier and they can kind of like relieve themselves of their guilt, it can become, just as you said, be careful of the words because persistent to me is a wonderful quality. Absolutely. And as is determined. Yes. And, you yes, know, and to, to, and to look at these things. So in this segment, we like to have, have I like to have my guests take people outside the box, like give right. them some piece of information, stretch some concept around and you can do it around anything. But we're, we're going to be talking about dogs and, and your behavior sure. stuff. I'm pretty sure, though, you can you uh -huh. any of these segments, you can go off and do anything you want. This is your time now. Mm -hmm. So um, great. But take us outside the box. Uh, you know, what do you think people most don't understand or need to, to oh, have kind of their great. stuff stretched when it comes to being a dog owner? Uh, it's a, that's a wonderful, wonderful question. Um, what really happened to me as a, as a child, just loving puppies and stuff, and then eventually when I married and had children, I started to breed Labrador Retrievers. And watching these beautiful creatures come into the earth, I had a litter every two years. So I was I was breeding as a hobby, not for fi for um, building income, you know. So um, I would say to people, if you can understand 
the growth spurts from birth to three months, three months to six months, six to nine, nine to 12, and 12 to 15, when now your puppy is a junior dog, you will absolutely look one day and go, okay, so we're in month six. This is going to happen. And when suddenly we realize they, are, they grow in the same capacity but at a much more accelerated rate than our, as our kids do. So it's important. You have to stimulate the brain. Outside of the box, I would say to people, please, let's think about using your dog's brain. That, we can walk him to Canada. He will not be as tired if we teach him a few tricks, meaning learning to sit and to stay, to learn to absolutely control himself or herself and to self-soothe, meaning take a toy, take a, a, a bone or something, entertain yourself for a while, puppy. And I, I think, as I'm hearing myself speak, I'm thinking this must be uh, running in a similar vein as it does with children. When, when I raised my sons, I had no desire to have their calendars filled all the time with um, after-school activities. Didn't want it. I wanted them to have free time, you know, to go outside, to really be able to play, to learn music, which they both did on their own. And outside of the box, another one, um, Dr. Kevin, is... Please, if you, if you are fortunate enough to adopt a dog and have the means and the desire to do so with a rescue, certain qualities people say, see, he was abused. And I will say to people, what do you mean abused? And they say, look how he kind of shies to the side. And I'll say, you know, that could simply be DNA. And then they look at me kind of, you know, quizzically and say, well, what do you mean? And I say, well, he could be born that way. It's a very sensitive soul. If he was a human, he'd probably be a poet, a painter, you know. And so don't necessarily assume that traits you see in a dog are a result of abuse for this reason. We then, as human beings, for the most part, have kind hearts. We've rescued the dog for many reasons. But if when I look at this dog and I think, I need to really coddle you, I am doing the dog a very big disservice. So my attitude toward a rescue dog is, yes, whatever, that was yesterday, this is today, and I certainly have my share of pain, and at some point we could sit down and discuss those stories, but let's get on with it. Let's go. Let me teach you how to retrieve. Let me teach you how to sit. Let me teach you how to go for a ride in a car. And, you know, it sounds obvious when I say it, but it is not. And then when I'll say to folks, do you want to get a puppy or do you want to get a, a more mature dog? Think, set an intention. I'm very big on setting an intention. I visualize what I would like to accomplish with this dog. And when someone said to me, how do you do what you do? And I said, I think about the dog and I try to figure out who he is and take the path of least resistance in teaching him. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let me ask you a question, because I know we're going to be going to break again in a second. I keep my eye on the thing. But um, so would it be fair to say, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, that if you're dealing with a dog that, let's say, had some trauma in his past, like a rescue dog, and yeah. you say, okay, well, we're going to move forward from here, and yeah. we're going to teach him how to, you know, do this and do this, and, you know, we're going to engage right. his mind. And I will yeah. ask the rest of the question when we get back, because the music just started. <laughs> we'll be right back with Mary Ellen Walsh, who is a dog behaviorist. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information 
to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. This is why you work so hard to pay the mortgage. Because home is more than four walls and a roof. It's that porch swing and a summer evening. It's everybody over for Sunday dinner and your family sleeping in their own beds at night. Making home affordable is a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Good night, Mama. This is why. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show. Uh, remember, we are a live call-in show. You can now can call in at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. Uh, I am here with uh, Mary Ellen Walsh. Uh, she has worked with thousands of families with dog behavior problems for over 30 years. She's a renowned canine behaviorist and champion AKC breed. AKC Breeder, say that fast three times, uh, and you can find out more about Mary Ellen. I'm looking and my write-up doesn't have a website for her, so I'm going to make sure that uh, on our next, by our next break, that you go in and add in the comment, where is the best place to reach you, Mary Ellen? Can you do that Thank for you, me? Doctor. I sure will. I'll do it right now. Great. Yeah, just go to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin and put your website under the comments uh, and uh, people will be able to contact you there. Um, you were talking about, you were, in our, the end of our last segment, you were talking about how, you know, that uh, if a dog maybe is a rescue dog, has been abused or had some kind of trauma, you still kind of, you don't want to coddle them. You actually want to encourage them to do things, to interact. Uh, to train them and engage their brain. Um, mm -hmm. But question I was going to ask you is, I know that um, that sometimes when I work with kids, that mm -hmm. when kids have had a trauma or has something going on, giving them something that they can succeed at actually helps them with the healing process because they feel better about themselves. Do you think the same is true of dogs? I do 100%, Dr. Kevin. 100%, yes. We wow. move past them being more internal and, and consumed with fear, or however it manifests themselves, right? And then I start to – one of the things you can, I do with dogs is I'll pick up their tail. Uh, even if it's a bulldog with a kind of a stubby, cropped tail, the very nature of a dog carrying its tail a little higher than – and certainly between its legs – gives it more confidence. It allows the dog almost to breathe. So, yes, I agree. Teaching them, having them exceed and excel, that the shyness goes, tends to go away. They build confidence. It's a beautiful thing to see. As I'm sure you get a lot of satisfaction with children doing that. Well, yeah, children and adults, I work with both. But, yeah, okay. um, I, for some reason, every time you talk, I keep on thinking about the, the kids that I've worked with um, through mm -hmm. the years. I, but again, the same thing can apply to a traumatized adult that, you know, that you can do that. So this is the segment that's called um, Behind the Curtain. Um, this, uh -huh. this starts with a little quiz. We see if you get to, if you can answer the question or not. Are you ready? I am indeed. What movie did this line come from? Ignore the man behind the curtain. That's like name that tune, Dr. Kevin. <laughs> My brain goes into <laughs> reverse. Ah, ignore the man. Ignore the man behind the curtain. Uh, first thing that came to mind is Dorian Gray, but that's a that's a door. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The Wizard of Oz, the oh, great okay. and powerful Oz. Um, okay. Who? Um, and in your case, this is very appropriate because I all I I do this at this segment because. What happened was 
we got the truth got exposed, which is what we talk about in this segment, a truth that uh -huh. is that there's something that gets misrepresented that people hear and repeat, but it's wrong. And of course, the truth was exposed by a dog because Toto pulled the curtain back. Oh, that's true. Oh, that is true. I see. OK. He yeah, Toto pulled the curtain back and exposed that the great and powerful Oz was a shyster from Kansas. Um, <laughs> and so where would you like to pull a curtain back? Something that you hear that just sets your teeth on edge because it's an urban myth or a legend or it's something that everybody says is the right thing and you as the expert knows it's not or that it's misrepresented. Oh, yeah. so many things. For one, um, that you really shouldn't start teaching a dog um, t till they're six months old. It's a huge. It's just a huge urban myth, uh, and it circulates. And uh, oh, and another lovely one, if you're a cat person, is that cats cannot be trained. Cats perpetrate that themselves. <laughs> they said that. <laughs> we cannot be trained, so we humans repeat it and believe it. Hmm. Isn't that one of another one? Bijan Frise's, and forgive me, Bijan Frise breeders and owners, they're lovely. But there's a myth that circulates that you cannot house train a Bijan Frise. So people have one sponge just to clean up the pee in the house from the Bijan, which is it's not so. So these these myths like this circulate in the uh, uh, dog world as well, and they just make me chuckle. And I actually say to people when we're working. Um, together with with a dog or a pack, I work with breeders in their packs as well. That when we're talking, if what I say to you doesn't say hello, you know, to your to your intuition, then throw it out. Accept only what comes in, and it feels like that's you know we that's right, that fits, that feels good. You know, we we I believe that we have that that truth in us. And um, that element of like, this is going to be okay. And when you bring that to the situation, and and you must, I guess, Dr. Kevin, with the children too, when you see children that have been um, misdiagnosed perhaps or, or given labels that they don't deserve, my heart breaks the situations like that. Oh, absolutely. So we're not going to get me started on that or you won't get a word in for the rest of the show. Um, okay. uh, so what I do want to um, find out is, is so let's correct that myth. When is an appropriate age to start training a dog? Great. What, what I suggest to people is they typically bring a state law in our state here in, in Connecticut is eight weeks. Um, and you can start with a puppy within days of bringing a puppy home. And, and uh, you, the, because then at that point, the human involved in the situation, the owner has the opportunity to sit down and really collect their thoughts and to know where you're headed. I lay a plan out for folks at eight weeks from, you know, from eight to 12 weeks, what we're looking at in terms of physiological development, emotional development, their mental um, capacity at that time, how they have limited attention span. Because ultimately, what we'd want to do is build trust, you know, in a friendship. You can trust me. I will not lie to you. So that they will come to us and then respond to us. Because around the relationship, it's love, patience. And I'm human. I sometimes say to my dogs, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, with a mother's look that could stop a stone. And everybody stops and they go, uh-oh, I think she's upset. <laughs> but there's love in it. And I have said to my dogs, even in the show ring, oh, you are so intelligent, and I love you so much, I'm going to kill you. If you don't yeah. stand still. I am. <laughs> and the judge, Dr. Kevin, the judge was right at my elbow, and I just went, oh. And she, the judge started to laugh because she herself was a breeder, and she said, oh, this is an age. And we just stood there and really enjoying the moment of trying to, you know, reel in a funny puppy. So um, that's the way I look at those because the, every life is so fleeting. And so if I can, you know, uh, yeah. turn that around with people and, and, and have them realize, too, your dog will respond to me because I will say lovingly to that, to that four-legged, look, look at me. And when they do, Kevin, the emotion that comes through my eyes to them is, I just love you. It doesn't matter that you're misbehaving because <laughs> I sure did enough of that when I was a kid. See, I see myself in them. 
when well, I see you know, when it's, I see myself as a kid and just testing things, testing out the waters to see how much I could, you know, how far I could push. <laughs> and well, when and love comes back and, and explanation and knowledge, it's all good. So when that's the biggest when, kick I get out of it. When you know, when people, uh, you know, when any dog or human, you know is just being a kid it's when they're a kid they're just being a puppy when they're a puppy you know you 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 have to just you you love them through bad behavior doesn't mean that you you don't you know still you know reprimand in an appropriate way or you know set a boundary and it's Mm -hmm. and that trust thing is so important that trust and knowing that they're not going to lie and now, are dogs not just born somewhat? Uh, are they not born trusting? Uh, typically, yes, they are. But as as we can, they can lose trust very easily. Yeah. Um, okay. Very easily. So, uh, particularly with newborns, you know, we babies, uh, you know, I watch them from inception to to old age. And you see the progression and the, and the love in a puppy's uh, life. And that's the point. We have to be a bit selfless. It, it frankly amazes me when I speak to young mothers who are indeed very busy. Some are, some are not, because they're blessed with, um, you know, lots of household help and assistance and whatnot. But a newborn pup at about eight weeks, is, which is, you know, a little more than newborn, but not really realizing they're on the planet yet, it takes time. You can't rush house training. It takes understanding. So that's why I lay the plan out. It's going to take two to three weeks of repetition until until six months when the dog can maybe be trusted. But you always have one eye on, one eye off. So you're building this, this routine and this sense of I'm patient, I love you. And there are times when I use crates with my dogs. Um, it's just a conventional wisdom, and especially in our society today, should we need to be evacuated, a crate is a wonderful place to have your dog if we're in shelters. It really kind of boils down to that at this point. It used to be more philosophical, but now it's more practical. So well, how do and people recognize that? I would think that... Oh, and there is our... Uh, break music. We'll be right back with Mary Ellen Walsh, a canine behaviorist. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Arrow's Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Own Times Radio. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last segment of the Dr. Kevin Show, uh, where we challenge everything and everyone. We try to bring you some new perspectives, new ways of being, some new ideas. Remember, this is a call-in show. If you are the owner of a dog and you're confused by some of their behaviors or you wonder how to be a better um, dog parent, now is your time to ask expert Mary Ellen Walsh. You can call in at 202-570-7057. That's 
Uh, I'm sorry. I 202-570-7057. Um, you can also come to facebook.com backslash my Dr. Kevin. If you leave a post there with a question, uh, we will uh, get an answer for you. Uh, and she has put her website on there, which is thinklikemydog.com. That's no, thinklikemydog.com. Like I'm what? sorry, Dr. Kevin, Kevin, to interrupt. I just realized I typoed my own website. It's, it is www.thinklikeyourdog.com. Oh, the my oh dog, my. I don't know. That's Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Typo. Uh, okay. So you're going to go in because I can't delete those comments. I can only hide them, but okay. you can delete them because you made them. And then you can just, so, so that is www.thinklikeyourdog.com. Like dog.com. I have put the correct one in, uh, but I need you to get rid of the other ones for me when you get a chance. Uh, The other thing is, Mary Ellen, when you, uh, and there we go, and your website comes right up as soon as I do it. It shows up with a picture of that beautiful uh, dog that you have. Um, So, uh, I know one of the things you were saying at the close of the last se- a section and I and what struck my head was that, you know, you said about the amount of time to parent a puppy. If you want to do it right, mm-hmm. you want to train them and, and you want to invest in it. And of course, I'm always saying the same thing. And I, I have I, I will I will own up to the fact that I have said to parents, if you weren't going to bother to parent, why did you have a child? And the same would be true of a puppy. It's not like they, they, you get a cute, adorable puppy and then go, why is this puppy engaging in such bad behavior? Well, maybe because you're not being a good parent to it. Maybe because yes, you're I not you. giving it that stuff. So consistency is so important with kids. I'm assuming it's important with dogs as well, yes? You, Dr. Kevin, put it just as you say consistency. You bite my, had a broad smile on my face. Yes, absolutely. And you know what I explained to people that it just was a lightning bolt one day. And I said, you know, when you think about it, consistency will help you as well. I was a child that just innately just did not want routine in my life. It didn't want schedules. It was just something that emanated from my young soul. And now I find out because dogs taught me that schedules are lovely. It teaches me I'm safe. I'm secure. And then it has a benefit for the parents, as you mentioned, lovely term, dog parents. You do things approximately, not rigidly, the same time every day. And like you, I wonder why do people have dogs um, if you're not willing to do that. But what I found and I like to teach people is that what we teach our dogs, we teach as we do our children through example. My calm attitude, my enthusiasm for them, as you can hear in my voice, right, um, teaches them that they're well loved, that I will be there for you, and I say that to the children whose dogs I train, when they act as if the dog is a nuisance, and I say, you know, you have a choice. You can uh, look at the dog that way, and maybe you're feeling a, a bit competitive with the puppy, and you know, meaning it's taking too much of mom's time. And they'll say, yeah, and I say, but that's great. That's okay. That's a very normal way to feel, and. You know, then then we, I ask them to, you know, make a decision about things. And these can be very young children, and I know I'm empowering them. Am I correct in that, Dr. Kevin, when I say that to a child about the dog and helping mom and the gratitude for having the opportunity to have a dog? Well, and and empowering the child, yes, and, and empowering that child in that they they can be a pivotal part of the process. Mm-hmm. That that this is this is this not even that this is this is mom's dog, um, that that this is a member of the family, it's a four-legged right. member of the family, and if you were to have a young sibling, it would be the same thing. And if you have an older right. sibling and you see sometimes they get frustrated because you might need extra help, it's the same thing. That same thing. puppy is just another member of the family, and yeah, it's going to have times when it needs more. Time and attention. Exactly. And I find that when I'll say to the children, too, um, it's an op- I don't say this to children, I say to the moms, it's a wonderful opportunity for kids to rec- take care of another living being and see the involvement, the time, and the energy it takes. 
and I have a saying to the kids, I go, look, you, you treat the dog, right, the golden rule, treat the dog the way you would like to be treated. And I, I say to them that, you know, and I'd like your opinion. And these can be very young kids, five, six, seven. Because it seems yeah. as though the kids are very well versed. I mean, yes, much more ahead in advance than I was at six, and verbal. Um, and they loved to chime in. One little boy, I, I said, he was four. And I said to him, you know, what are we going to do about this puppy training, house training issue? He keeps peeing on the floor, the puppy. And Mom was frustrated. He looked at me and said, put in a doggy door. I mean, I, with the family, everybody looked around and went, did he just say that? I think he was five years old. So this yep. young boy at five one Saturday morning said he was put in a doggy door. So maybe he had seen it on TV, or there was some way that he learned about it. Could be on computer these days. But everybody yep. looked at me and said, "We never thought of that." So they could, as we say, children say the darndest things. Yes. So I like to involve them in the process, you know. And I say to them, "Your dog, your puppy, does not know you're not dad or mom. They know you're human, and the, their nature tells them to follow you." They're followers. They are not leaders. So you, then I explain about leading from love and kindness and discipline. You have to be firm. You have to be firm, and you want to teach boundaries and respect, but you do that with example. And it's now, a, what a wonderful a, learning tool for kids, you know, pups. And I I work with dogs, with children who have autism. They're on the spectrum, most often Asperger's. And it's a wonderful thing to see a child with Asperger's work with a, tra- a dog to work with this child. It, it's to me full circle. Oh, um, you know, the, there is not enough praise or enough out there, um, uh, I don't think, on the wonders that therapy dogs do. Therapy dogs can be absolutely amazing, just like therapy horses. I mean, they they can they can go places and do things to help a child or an adult who's locked in trauma or fear to to become brave enough to come back out in the world like no human can. Yeah, it's a true blessing, isn't it, from the animals? Oh yeah, I mean, there's blessing. just some incredible, and uh, you can tell me if this was a was a was an in, an incorrect thing from a dog perspective. Um, but I've also had times when in working with kids where I have said, you know, if the, if the child gets snippy or gets angry or, you know, is venting frustration, um, but it's at the dog in an angry way or a highly emotional way. And I'll be like, do you, you know, I'll ask the child, do you like, do you like it if mommy or daddy or, you know, or big brother or sister, you know, talks angry at you or yells at you instead of explaining to you what you needed to do differently or sometimes yells at you and you know it has nothing to do with you because they're upset about something else. And they're like, no, it doesn't right. feel good. And I said, well, it doesn't feel good to your dog either. Correct. Your dog just wants to love you. Your dog just wants to say, I'm here, I'm here. So, so. Mm-hmm. You know, don't 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 speak with a lot of anger or negative emotions towards your dog, because they don't they don't like it any more than you. And when you're trying to figure out what did I do wrong, they're trying to figure out the same thing. Same. What did I do wrong? Exactly. Was was that a correct thing to tell a child? Oh, yes, it's very correct. From the dog's perspective, of course. (laughs) From the dog's perspective, because they do. Um, My father taught us as children that, listen, never ridicule your dog. And, of course, I didn't know what that meant. And I said, what does it mean? He goes, well, you never would point your finger at the dog and laugh if a puppy fell down, because they do. He said, how would you like it if you were in school and everybody pointed their finger at you and laughed? You know, we and we all feel that internal oh no feeling. And I said, and he explained to me that dogs do. And he would say, "Listen, understand, they have instinct and they have emotion. And now there's a lot of work being done around how dogs think. And when I was a child, to me, no one believed that dogs think. Oh, I know, I know for certain they do. And I of also believe they're telepathic. 
Of course. Of course, but that was a perfect thing to say to the child because then it gives them the opportunity to be, you know, have a little empathy. So there's an interesting question, and we're almost out of time, and but I want to get this question in. Would you consider yourself an animal communicator? Do you feel like you literally know what the dog is thinking and saying? Yes, I do. Be Good. Because that is how I do my work. I feel and have felt for many years since the inception that this is coming through me because there are times when I hear myself responding to a situation and behavior and I'm addressing the issue and then I, as I stand back and I watch myself, hear myself saying what I'm saying. So it's guided, it's coming through me. And this is Mary Ellen Walsh. She is a canine behaviorist. She's been over for over 30 years. She's helped people Thousands of people save, uh, solve problems, behavioral problems with their dogs, helping them to be better dog owners, better dog parents. You can find out more about her at www.thinklikeyourdog.com. Mary Ellen, thank you for coming on the show. I thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Kevin. Have a great night. Have a happy holiday. You too. Thank you.